Welcome to this video where we're going to cover how we connect to the Binance API. The specific goal of this video is to go and create a order inside Binance so that via C Sharp we're going to actually create a order to buy some cryptocurrency or actually just exchange some cryptocurrency to another cryptocurrency. So as you can see in here I have some SLP which is a cryptocurrency called Smooth Love Potion. It's actually from the game Axie Infinity and I'm already logged in so if we check down here you can see I have 8174 SLP so the idea here is as you can see this is SLP up against the USDT so the idea is to go and sell some SLP as you can see over here right now we have the order book where we do have the current price then we have some people down here that actually want to buy some SLP and up here we have the people who want to sell it so it's just to give you an idea of what this video is going to be about but what the goal would be is that we have some SLP and we're going to just sell it to the highest buyer it's not really an investment strategy and not really a good one you just sell it to whoever want to buy it but it is just to get started with the binance api so if we just go back to this binance api page and then scroll down to the button then we have this frequently asked questions where it says is there an api documentation and if we expand that it says yes please refer to this page so let's just go and open that page in a new tab and it's actually from in here we have all the documentation of the binance api so we do need to set up an api key and if we just scroll down a bit you can see it all also have a dotnet connector so as you can see, this is a lightweight library that works as a connector to Binance public API written for C Sharp users. And if you click that link, we come to this GitHub page. And from inside here, if we scroll a bit down, you can see that the installation is actually just a package called Binance.spot. So what I would like to do is to go and create a new Blazor server app. You can also just go and create a console app if that's what you like. But just to get some nice UI, I will just go and create a Blazor server app. So let's go and open Visual Studio 2022 and then say we want to create a new project and it should be a Blazor server app. So we say next. Then let's go and call it something like my first Binance app and then everything should be okay so we say next so i know that dotnet 7 is out now but just to keep this video supported for a longer time i will go and say that we're going to use the dotnet 6 version because that is the long-term supported version and then the rest of the settings should be okay so we can just go and say create so first of all let's go and see if we can install the binance.spot package from the nuget package area so let's go and say manage nuget packages let's go to browse and then we just say Binance. So as you can see, we have the Binance.spot NuGet package here. So let's go and install that. And then it actually looks like everything is okay now. So just to make sure, let's go and try and run the application so we can test if it's working. And it seems to be working fine because we get the default Blazor server application. So just close it again. So what I want to do now is actually to go and test if the library is working. And we can do that by looking at the documentation here where we can go and see what the server time is on the server when we go and create a new instance of a market inside Binance. So as we can see here, we have to use the Binance.spot. Then we are able to create a new instance of this market. Then we can go and say market and then say check server time. Then save it in a string and then display it. In this case, it's a console. We are not going to display it in a console. We're going to display it just on the page. So if we go back to the Blazor server app, let's go to pages and go to the index file so what we could do is just to go and get rid of this and let's just take the head one or the headline one and let's call it by names dashboard or something like that we also want to go and display the time that we get so i'll just go and make a paragraph that's where we can go and display the server time that we should get re in return so let's go and make the code section here and then we can also go and say using 
and then the Binance.spot so that we should be able to create a new instance of the market. And I think that we should just go and fetch the server time from Binance when we actually load the page. So I think the easiest way to do it is to go to this fetch data file. So when you scroll down, you have this method called on initialized async that we can just go and copy and then paste it into our index file and then just go and remove everything inside the method. So now that we have our uninitialized async, we can go and create some of the code that we saw in the documentation. So back on GitHub, we had these two lines of code. Let's go and copy them and put them inside the on initialized async method. And because it's already a async task, then we can go and await it. So that's good. And then I actually think instead of creating the variable inside the method here, we can just go and say that we want to create the server time up here. So we say string and then say server time, because what we are able to do then is to take the server time and say that we want to display it inside our paragraph. We could also just in the beginning go and say that the default value should be time not found. Or actually I just set it to server time not found. So without actually reading more documentation now, I'll just go and test this if it's work because right now we actually don't have an API key anywhere, but I think that we should might be able to go and check the server time without an API key, but we will go and see. So let's run the application and we do actually get the server time. So it's just a, it looks like some JSON where we have the server time name and then the value is this. So it also looked like a timestamp. So now that we can see that the Binance.spot library is working, let's go and make some more advanced stuff to see if we can go and actually sell or buy some cryptocurrencies. So let's close this again. And let's go back to GitHub's documentation because it is from in here that we can go and see that this Binance connector is having some examples here in this folder. And as you can see, we can choose between C sharp and F sharp. So I'll just choose C sharp. And in here you have a lot of examples on different things that you can use this Binance connector to. But the one we are interested in is this spot account trade. And then you can actually see you, you have a lot of options that you can choose from when trading via the API. So you can see you have, for example, you can create a new order. You could also create a test new order. You can go and cancel an order. And the one we are interested in is just to go and create a new order. So let's click on that example. And then we can see in here, it's actually not that complicated. If we look at this, this is the logger. And I don't really know if it's mandatory to have, as you can see, it's actually going as a parameter inside the HTTP client. But first of all, I think that we are going to create it without that. So the only thing we have to worry about is this HTTP client, the API key and the secret API key. And from there on, we can actually just go and create a new instance of this spot account trade where we give it the HTTP client, we give it the API key, and we also give it the API secret. And then we can use this spot account trade down here to say that we want to create a new order. And then we can actually just go and say what pair do we want to create the new order on. So in this case, it is the Binance coin up against the USDT. So the pair I'm going to use is SLP and then USDT. Then you want to say what side do you want to set this on? So we are on the selling side and that's actually also the side that I want to be on. And then just say that this order type is just on the market. And then how many do we want to sell? And when that is executed, we will get some kind of result. When you trade on Binance, there is actually some limitations. Like when we go in and we say that we want to sell some SLP, to get USDT, as you can see, if I just want to go and say that I want to sell one SLP, then you can see it's actually 0.002 USDT. So it's almost nothing. And if I go and say I want to sell, then you can see the order have to have a value more than 10 USDT. So in that case, I think four and a half thousand SLP. That's actually more than 10 USDT right now, but I think we will just go and test it. So we will just try with one at first. Let's see what we get as a response from Binance. And then after that, let's try to sell four and a half thousand SLP. So if we just go back to GitHub, I actually just want to go and copy and paste all this and let's go back to the code. And in this case, I actually just want to create a button 
so that when we click the button, I could just call it sell SLP, then it's going to execute a method and that is the method we're going to create right now. So just like before, I create a async task so that we can actually go and await the call inside the method and this method I call sell SLP. So now I just copy and pasted the code from GitHub and I'll just go and remove the parameter inside the HTTP client. And then you can see down here, it actually says that site and order type that it doesn't exist in the current context. And if we go back to GitHub, we can actually see that they're also using something called Binance Common and also Binance.spot.models. So I'll just try to take this Binance.common first and let's include that inside our index page. So let's go and copy and paste this Binance Spot and say common instead. And that actually did not work. So let's go and take this Binance.spot.models instead. And I don't think we have to use this common. So let's just go and overwrite that one. And now you can see we have the site and the order type. So first of all, let's go and say that we don't want to use BNB, but SLP instead. And then we actually have to go and find the API key and the API secret. But before we do that, I just want to go and create the button up here. So now I just created this button where we have a on click inside and where it will go and trigger the sell SLP method when we click the button. And the text inside the button is just sell SLP. I actually also want to go and include the result. So when we get the result from the Binance server, then we can go and display it. So I will actually go and just say that this result should also be a property up here. So we can go and say string and results and i actually think the default should just be empty when we do it like this we can also go and display the result up in this paragraph to get the api key and the secret api key we need to go to binance and then go to the profile icon up here and then we're going to say api management so an important thing here is that you actually have to be what is called kyc so you need to be a verified user to be able to create a api key and as you can see if i just hover over here you can see that my user is verified so it's important that you have a verified user but when you are verified you can go and say create API and we can actually just go and say that this system should generate the API key. So I'll just say next, then we should give it a name. So I'll just call this one for test and say next. Then we need to slide this puzzle and then go and verify your email and your phone number. So when you have done that, you will get this API key and a secret key. And of course I will go and delete this when I am finished with this video. So I will just go and copy the API key and put it inside our code and then also the secret key and put it inside the API secret here. If you at some point are making a more serious application than just a test app, then you of course might want to go and save these some other places than in just this file. But let's go and test this and see if the logger is mandatory or if we can just go and use the HTTP client without the logger. So let's run the application. And as you can see, we still get the server time. So the library should still work. And if we click sell SLP, let's try to see what happens. And we do actually get an on handle exception. Okay, so when we open the debugging tool, we can actually see binance.common of something exception was thrown. So first of all, what I want to do is just to close the application. And then I maybe think that we have to include the binance.common. Let's try to see if that fix anything. And let's try again to sell the SLP. Okay, so we still get the same error. But I actually found out if we just close this and we go back to the API page inside Binance, then it's actually not enabled that we can trade in the spot market. And when we hover over this, it says you must apply the IP access restriction filter in order to enable this permission. So what we should do is to go to this edit restrictions and then down here the IP access restrictions should be restricted to trust IPs only. So, and that's also the recommended. So I'll just go and tap that on. And then I actually think I need to go and find my IP address. So I'll just go to Google and say, find my IP address. 
and here I get it because I don't have a static IP address. So my IP address will sometimes change, but for now I think it's okay. So I'll just go and put in my IP address here and then say confirm. And I really think this is for security reasons because even though if I show you this, then you cannot use it if you don't have this IP address. If you're really crazy, you could maybe go and fake this IP address, but don't worry, I will go and just delete this API key when I'm finished with the video. So what I can do now is to go and enable this spot and margin trading, and hopefully that is enough. So let's go and say save. And then again, I have to verify with my phone number. And when that is done, it says edit API was succeeded. So let's try to open our application again and see if anything has changed, if it's working now. And I'll say sell SLP, and we actually still get the same error. So I'll just go and try to find out what is wrong. So the first thing I just tried out was this try catch around the code that we already created inside the sell SLP method. And when I did that, I used the Binance client exception so that I could show what was wrong. And then the error message I actually get was this timestamp for this request was 1000 millisecond ahead of the service time. And after looking at Stack Overflow, it was actually just something with my PC. So if you run into the same problem, the way you fix it is by going to settings on your computer and then go to time and language. And inside the date and time, you can actually go down here and say sync now so that your computer is actually up to date with the time. And after I did that, then when I'm testing now, I actually get another error called filter failure. And then I actually don't know how you say this notional, but I think that it could might be have something to do with the amount that we are trying to sell. So if we go to go and close the application again, and then we know that inside our code here, if we sell four and a half thousand instead of one, then we should get over the minimum value that we have to sell. So let's go and try again and let's try to sell the SLP. And I actually think that it looks like it was good. We can see that it returns the symbol which was SLP USDT. We do get an order ID. And as you can see here, we also get a price. And I actually just think that the price is zero because then it will just automatically sell the SLP to the person who actually bid the highest. And we actually, if we just scroll a bit further, you can see we have this called fills. And if we just look inside that, it's actually an array that is going to return to us. And then you can see the price here. So I actually think this was the price that we sell it to, but we can of course go and check it. So I'll just go back to Binance. And as we can see now, I actually have a lot less SLP right now, but I have over 10 USDT. So it looks like that the sell of the SLP has going well. And I think we should be able to go down here at the bottom and then say order history. And we can actually see that we sell it and it was also the same price as we saw in the code. So I think this is okay for an introduction in Binance API when you use C Sharp. As you can see, it's actually not that complicated when you know how to do it. And hopefully I will continue this video to be a serious so that we can go and dive a little bit deeper into the Binance API when we use C Sharp. But for now, thank you for watching and go and have a nice day. Bye.